to Brian's Good News. Good afternoon. Welcome along to this Community Elements show on this Friday. Uh, we've got Brian once again and we're starting off with the story of listeners delivering this. 25 tonnes of food, the equivalent of more than 50,000 meals, was collected during the original 106 Christmas appeal. Donations were gathered for the appeal, which was backed by the Evening Express in aid of Community Food Initiatives North East Seafang. The appeal for this uh, social enterprise, based on the city's Poynanook Road, was launched in November and ended on Hogmanay. A total of 25.1 tonnes of food, equivalent to practically 60,000 meals, was generated by the collection, which saw people hand in donations to Marshall Square, where the Evening Express and Original 106 are based, as well as various other drop-off points. Chief Executive of Seafine, Dave Simmers, said the generosity of people was remarkable and every single donation has had a phenomenal impact. The festive time is one of particular financial pressures and, for many, that's just untenable. But these contributions have made it possible for a whole range of people to have a Christmas they could not otherwise have dreamt of and that cannot be understated. The amount collected surpassed last year's amount by almost a quarter and Dave spoke of his delight at the total. He said, it's quite remarkable. Last year there was over 20 tonnes if I can recall. To have beaten that by over 25% is pretty fantastic and just shows the generosity of the general public and the corporates who have shown an incredible amount of festive spirit and compassion and care for their neighbours. I always say to people that you should look, imagine yourself in the other person's shoes as this could be any of us walking through that food bank door and that has an impact. People recognise that none of us are secure. Redundancy or mental health issues can all result of this. So there is an increased recognition and the public have come good big time. Dave added, poverty and the impact on lower income families does not just happen at Christmas. The need goes on and a lot of people are struggling. But just that tin of beans or a box of cornflakes or whatever you can afford can go towards making life easier for people who are really struggling. Martin Ingram, original 106 program controller, said, I'd really like to thank all the original 106 listeners who supported our appeal again this year. We received an incredible amount of donations at Marshall Square, plus our many other drop-off points in the northeast and, of course, at Seafang. The generosity of our listeners shouldn't surprise me because they're all so lovely but it doesn't stop everyone at original being blown away by the kindness and thoughtfulness of the listeners to original 106 if the need is there for us to do the same again next year we shall be there A record number of people visited Donotra Castle last year, promoting plans for a visitor centre. Over 130,000 visitors entered the historic castle in 2019, an increase of nearly 12,000 people since 2018. Meanwhile, the number of visitors travelling to the site but not entering it is estimated to be at least double this figure. The Clifftop Fortress at Stonehaven, which previously housed the Scottish Crown Jewels, attracts thousands of visitors each year. However, castle custodian Jim Wands believes building a visitor centre will draw in more. He said, we could certainly do with a visitor centre. The plans are almost ready to be submitted. Almost ready, not quite. But only because we are trying to get it right. We want the visitor centre to be the best experience as well. So they turn up and they're not disappointed with the cafe or the shop. We want it to be absolutely spot on, so we're taking our time getting everything right with it. Dunotter is positioned on a coastal headland, which visitors flock to for its dramatic location. Mr. Wan said, We're delighted with the numbers. That's about 9% up on what we were last year, which is absolutely brilliant. 
I'm really chuffed for the staff that we've managed to get these figures up, he added. I think it goes to show the popularity of Scotland as a whole. It seems to be one of the main destinations right now, and certainly Donato Castle is capitalising on that. Think about what a castle should be like in Scotland, and ask someone to describe a Scottish castle. I think Donato Castle just embodies that. He believes a number of other factors are responsible for the surge in visitors, praising a new website run by Stunning Stonehaven, and also highlighting the positive effects of the Aberdeen Western Peripheral Route, which opened to traffic last year. He said, You can go on the website and find out about Stonehaven and the area and the castles, one of the main draws. Our overseas numbers are pretty good, but we're seeing some more people, certainly from the local area, since the AWPR has been opened. We're getting a lot of people from north of Aberdeen who might not necessarily have thought of coming to Stonehaven for the day. Selfless people from across the northeast are giving up their time to help patients caught up in medical emergencies. The volunteers are trained up as Scottish Ambulance Service Community First Responders to assist paramedics when emergency 999 calls are made. Teams have also been instrumental in helping with the rollout of defibrillators across the region, including West Hill, Newmacher and Bridge of Dawn. Prior medical training is not required for volunteers, as full training is provided so they, they can attend to patients on the street or in their homes. Donald Montgomery, Community Resilient Coordinator who looks after the team in Grampian, Angus and Shetland, said, We're pretty well covered up in Grampian. I've got a really great team. They're a fantastic bunch. Every month they have to do a training night, but other than that, they can sign up for as many hours of voluntary work as they want. They'll be trained in things like CPR, how to use a defibrillator, how to treat asthma, burns, etc. They are allowed to use oxygen as well. Once volunteers have been trained up, they have to go through a 25-question multiple-choice exam and are also observed attending to someone acting as a casualty before they can pass and become a first responder. Donald said, once they are trained up, they can call in and say they're available, say, Monday from 6pm until midnight, and if any call comes in, they could be sent to them, as long as they're within five minutes. They could also be called and asked to go further afield if their help is needed. Their assistance is helpful in a range of circumstances, such as cardiac arrests, where every minute counts, and the sooner someone arrives on the scene to administer CPR, the higher the chance of survival. Community first responders will also be sent out to people with breathing difficulties and to deal with medical problems such as asthma, diabetes and epilepsy. Despite their training, they do not attend road traffic accidents, any alcohol-related jobs, anything relating to psychiatric issues, maternity calls or incidents involving a patient under the age of 16, although they are trained in psychiatry care just in case. A new team in Turret is in the process of being set up, which will help provide more coverage in the area. Several people have just completed their training and the process of looking for more volunteers will begin soon. Anyone who wishes to join a group or set up their own, is asked to get in contact with Donald, who can give them the right information and support them. They must live within five to seven miles of the area they plan to cover. Audrey Wood set up the Newmacher First Responders Group along with two others after getting in contact with the Scottish Ambulance Service around 15 years ago. She said, we've probably got enough people working with us, but we'd never say no to someone who would be able to volunteer through the day when the rest of us are at work. We're kept busy. We're on call every day. It's extremely fulfilling. I've been doing it since we first started it up 15 years ago. The ambulance service have been really supportive and we've been really well supported by the community. Our motto is... Neighbours Helping Neighbours. We set it up 
because we were made aware of the length of time an ambulance can take from call to arrival time. You never feel like you're alone. The ambulance service is only a call away. An Aberdeen Children's Charity is encouraging keen runners to sign up for an exciting challenge in the Big Apple. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the New York Marathon with Charlie House, one of the charities, signed up to take part. One of the six major events of its kind, it is the largest marathon in the world with more than 50,000 people taking part each year. Now it's hoped that North East residents will sign up for Charlie House, which supports children and young people with complex disabilities and or life-limiting conditions. The route begins in Staten Island and takes in a 26.2 mile stretch going through all five boroughs of New York, finishing in Manhattan Central Park. Taking place on November 1st, Charlie House has organised a schedule for those who are interested in taking part. Runners will arrive in New York on October 30th, with sightseeing taking place on October 31st, as well as a pre-race pasta party organised by the charity. The race will take place the next day and everyone will fly home on November 2nd. Those who are interested in taking part can either self-fund the trip, resulting in a lower minimum fundraising target of £1,000, or have the trip funded by Charlie House in exchange for a set fundraising target of £3,299. Each runner will get a branded running vest, fundraising pack, detailed training check guide, information and advice evenings, pre-race training runs and social meetups. Sponsorship money will be used to support the charity, which is currently fundraising £8 million to support the building and maintenance of its planned new specialist support centre, which will be set within four acres of ground at Woodend Hospital. A whopping £2.4 million of the funds has already been secured through generous supporters. Susan Crichton, Director of Fundraising at Charlie House, said this is the first year Charlie House has taken on a challenge like the New York City Marathon. And the fact it is the 50th anniversary of this iconic event makes it even more memorable. This is a time of year people are thinking about setting challenges for themselves and we would urge people to consider taking part. There's lots of time to train and the Charlie House team will be there every step of the way to provide support and encouragement. For details, email fundraise at charliehouse.org.uk or call 01224 313333. And we have a scripture this week taken from Proverbs chapter 2, verses 3 to 5. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and search for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. Amen. Amen. Brian, thank you very much for that. Now, last week was very Tory-centric, wasn't it? Indeed. In terms of the news. But this time, you've really gone to town, including going to the Big Apple. That's a bit of a distance away, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, Charlie House uh, seeming to really spread its wings and do what they can to raise that uh, £8 million pounds toward the They're centre. They're really putting some effort into that, aren't they? Uh, which uh, is going to be a really quite a place when it's fully built. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, I think we ought to pay a visit. <laughs> no doubt we will. And we, at least we were able to see Charlie House, uh, some of the volunteers, when we went through to the Tower of Show this last year. Of course. That's yes, true. remember that? I think we ought to go again. Right, excellent news about the uh, 20th five tonnes worth of food wow. having been raised and that through the original 106 and also sea the fine. evening express for sea fine so really really good on that and it, it's great that when there is a need people do step forward 
and they do give. Very impressive. So got that. It was must have been about a year or so ago, at least even two years, I think, since I last went to Donotta Castle. That uh, he is hoping that uh, they'll be able to improve what's there still further. Well, the, uh, the plans are uh, being drawn up at the moment and they're being very conscious of doing the best possible, aren't they? It's going to be very impressive and uh, I'm looking forward to going back there. Mm -hmm. And we come on to the last, uh, well, the third last story for today, which I suppose I'm the most impressed with, and this being the first responders which started off, certainly in this area, in New Macca, uh, but they're really doing a, a great work. I know that my colleague, uh, who works for Aberdeen City Council Ranger Service as a countryside ranger, his name is Duncan, and he is a first responder in the Braemar area. Oh, that's impressive. Yes, so he's he's done a lot of work on that. And once or twice when we've been working, his, his alarm has gone off, which sounds like a police siren, I thought I didn't realise there was a police car outside. No, it was <laughs> it was Duncan's uh, phone that was going off, letting him know that he had to go somewhere. Uh, but these people do a really good job. Uh, I suppose if I wasn't doing this, I might have even thought about doing that. Well, I'm quite certain that uh, for each of the responders, you know, they're not paid for doing this, but boy, do they gain from it. They. Uh, it's a very, very uplifting experience, I'm sure, for each and every one of them. Plus, uh, a lot of the time, I don't know whether other people find this, but I certainly do. You do first aid training uh, and a first aid refresher, but nine times out of ten, you hardly ever have to use it. So when you mm -hmm. actually come to use it, you sometimes do have to stop and think, what do I do now? What am I actually looking at? And then you go through all your, is it safe to go in? Um, and then you do your doctor ABC, which is danger response, airway, breathing, circulation. And after that, you get into a way of speaking to the patient to make sure that the patient at least knows that someone is there yes, and that help is on his way. And with regard to this now, if you come across anyone, even if you're not able to do anything, at least staying with them, and there's an app on the phone here now where you only, when you phone up your 999, if you think that is needed, especially if the person is concussed, you can actually give the three words that tell the ambulance crews exactly where you are. They look it up on a map and they can see within three metres exactly where you are. That's amazing. And then they'll come round. So you can do that. It's there to make things a little bit easier for these, for, for certainly emergency response crews, or if you've got yourself lost. So uh, excellent uh, news stories, uh, Brian. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure to do this. Good. Oh, by the way, how's the top 10 going from last year? You're not supposed to ask the right question yet because I haven't got ahead with it. <laughs> But I will do. You know how good I uh, am at stirring. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> Rob is he's only perfect when it comes to stirring. Well, I'd like him to be perfect in other ways. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, Rob. <laughs> we can, we, we, teasing you. We, we can all hope to be better than we are. All we can do is we have the grace to carry on with what we Amen. have today. Amen. Right, listeners, thank you very much. Uh, we've got some more great community elements, uh, items for you. But in the meanwhile, Brian, can I get you to go through the scripture, please? Of course. From Proverbs chapter 2, verses 3 to 5, which says, Yes, if thou criest over knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her, as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Amen. Amen. Brian, thank you very much. And we'll see you again next week at very the good. same time. And thanks very much to Brian for coming in there and doing that.
Now, 